In this video, I'm going to show you how to pack a Polk sled. I'm going to give you a basic gear list and some special occasion add-ons and a couple of things that you can do around camp to improve your living situation. So stick around. For years, I taught survival and outdoor leadership in the Marine Corps. Now my passion is helping you to develop the skills and techniques required for outdoor recreation. I'm Norseman, and this is Survivology 101. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Hey, so let me know in the comments, what's your favorite time of year to go camping? Winter camp is an amazing time for not only solitude, but for some really unique training experiences. In an environment like this, there's a lot less resources for you to rely on, so your two choices are to either bring more with you or venture farther from camp to gather it. One thing to always keep in mind in a snow-covered environment like this is everything's a little bit harder to do and takes a little bit longer to accomplish. Everything from movement to basic camp chores is always just a little bit more difficult. Fortunately, in an environment like this, our greatest adversary, the snow, is also our greatest ally. But that only works if we have the right gear and we know how to use it. Snowshoes and skis are both excellent options for mobility over the snow, but they do take practice and patience to learn and master. And one thing to keep in mind is that the more weight you put on your back, the less effective skis and snowshoes are going to be and the more draining they're going to be on you physically. So it goes without saying that the only real effective way to move gear over this environment is to pull it in a pulk sled which does take practice. I'll put a link here to a video that I did on how to build the Polk sled that you see in this video, and then you can decide if that's the right tool for you. So hey, put it down in the comments. What do you prefer in the backcountry, skis or snowshoes? One big advantage of camping in the winter in a snow-covered environment is that there's a lot less people interfering with your good time. But that also means you have a lower probability of being rescued if something were to go wrong. And if there is a rescue, it's going to take more effort on the part of the rescuers to locate you and get you home to safety. So now let's take a look at the gear list, figure out what to put in our sled to mitigate as many of these problems as we can and make our trip as safe and comfortable as possible. So let's talk for just a second about the four classifications of gear that we put into our Polk sled. The first is going to be permanent gear and that's gear that lives in the sled. Even in the off season when you store it away it still has that gear in it. The second is going to be camp gear and this is going to be camp specific to your trip and then there's a lot of little situational kits that you can add to that depending on what your trip is going to consist of. The third is transitional gear, and that's generally not something you bring with you, but when you're using your sled around camp to move firewood or evac a, a casualty or gather water or drag in your resupply materials, those are the kind of things that would be classified as transitional gear. And the last is going to be your safety gear, and that's generally a small survival kit and some small sustainment gear, and that's going to be strapped onto your body, either your chest or your back, so that if you have to ditch your sled, you still have enough gear to make it back alive. The first and main parts of our permanent gear are going to be, obviously, the sled shell itself, the poles, the sled bag, and I suggest using like a large duffel bag and preferably one that has shoulder straps as well, like a military sea bag. That way, if something catastrophic happens to the sled, you can still put your gear on your back and you can still get it out of there or get it into camp. Additionally, I keep a piece of closed cell foam cut to fit the bottom of my sled. So if I'm tossing in some transitional gear, like some tools that I'm taking out or firewood, I don't have to worry about it puncturing the bottom of the sled. Also, if I have to move a casualty, then they're not in contact with the cold bottom of the sled. They have a little bit of an insulation barrier. Also part of my permanent kit is a stove, a cook set, and a thermos. For the tools that live in my sled, I have a snow shovel, a folding saw, an axe, a leatherman, and a fixed blade knife. For shelter, I keep a tent with a tent repair kit, a tarp that can be strung up above the tent or below it, depending on the conditions, a small whisk broom to either clean snow off of gear before I enter the tent or to clean dirt and garbage out of the tent, and a space blanket. And the last thing that lives in my Polk year round is a set of snow goggles or at a minimum, a pair of decent polarized sunglasses in a durable case. 
So keep in mind, this is just a basic list and your needs may vary and you can adjust it accordingly. But the next thing I'll talk about is camp specific gear that pretty much goes every time, no matter what kind of camp I'm gonna do. Usually my camp specific gear, I keep in a canvas laundry bag so that it's separate from the permanent gear that lives in the sled. So if I need to separate them for any reason, it's easy enough to do. And in that bag would go situationally my food and water supplies, extra warming layers or extra clothing that I might need to bring, my sleeping bag and my sleeping pad for that camp. Depending on the weather conditions, I may bring a different rated sleeping bag, not something that I want to live in my sled. I'll always bring extra stove fuel and sometimes even an extra stove. And this bag will also contain my hygiene items for camp as well as any comfort items like a camp stool or something along those lines that I may bring into camp just to be more comfortable while I'm there. Some additions I recommend to adding to your camp kit, not to your permanent kit, would be a set of overwhites. If you're going out and you may have a need for camouflage, then a set of overwhites is fairly lightweight and easy to pack. A clothing brush to brush the snow off of your clothing. Some extra cordage, a headlamp or a lantern. And the reason that that item doesn't live in the sled is because batteries corrode. And I wanna make sure that I take that out every year and then replace it with fresh gear and fresh batteries every year. And the last addition that I highly recommend would be a first aid kit. My sled bag has a pocket in the front so I can keep my first aid kit easy to get to even when I'm on the move. If you're skiing on your trip, some things to consider that you might want to add to your kit situationally would be climbing skins, a waxing kit, some way to repair damaged bindings, and an extra set of baskets for your ski poles or possibly even a complete set of poles. And if you're snowshoeing, essentially the same equipment minus the wax kit. If you're going out hunting, consider bringing extra ammo, game processing equipment, maybe game bags, ropes and drag straps, and even rifle cleaning equipment can all go in that situational kit. And lastly, if you're traveling in avalanche prone terrain, something you're always gonna wanna have accessible is beacon, shovel, and probe. You're gonna wanna wear your beacon and it's gonna be in a transmit mode. You're gonna have a probe and you're gonna have a shovel so you can dig out your buddies. Hey, let me know down in the comments, what would you add to the permanent kit and to the camp kit? The safety kit is an essential part of dragging a pulk sled through most terrains and it's often overlooked. Any situation where you have to pull your quick release and ditch your sled with all your gear, this is what's going to bring you home. So you want to keep this gear on your body, either on your back, in a haversack, or in my case, in a chest rig. What I have in my kit is a small survival kit, some Titan survival cord, some fire making materials, and a pocket knife with a saw. I also have extra mittens and a wool hat, a folding cup for drinking, and some hand warmers. In the back of the bag, I have a 72 gallon trash bag, just in case I need it as a sleeping bag or some other weather protection, a small space blanket, a pair of wool socks, and a folding cook pot. And last but not least, my Emberlit Fire Ant. So this kit is enough to stay warm and dry and have an uncomfortable night or two so I can come back home. So what do you think of my four kit system? Do you like it? Give me a thumbs up and let me know you like it and put down in the comments, let me know anything that you would add or take out of the kit. Maybe I can adjust my kit so it can serve me better in the backcountry. When packing the gear in the sled, you wanna try and keep the heavier objects towards the bottom to keep the sled from tipping. They have a tendency to roll when turning corners. Additionally, on the outside of the bag, usually just tucked into the strap somewhere, I keep my snow shovel and my ax. So if I need them real quick to clear the trail, I don't have to unpack the entire load. The first thing I do when I get into camp is I stomp out my trail with snowshoes or skis and outline every location in the camp, where the tent's gonna be, where the fire's gonna be, where the restroom's gonna be, where I'm gonna store the food, all those things. And then once I get a nice track lined out, I get out my snow shovel and go to work, then I have a nice camp and I don't have to worry about snowshoes or skis to get to any of the necessities around camp. That's called a track plan. When you're done using your sled in camp for the day, you're going to have to store it. And I recommend storing it like this because there's nothing worse than waking up in the morning and finding all your gear frozen into a block of ice. You're in the way, buddy. I love you. I do. What you're in my way. I just wanna say that I feel.
feel that our love is real. Maybe we should hurry up and seal the deal. We just had a great time out in the snow. We had a cup of coffee. We covered the four kit system for winter camping. And we covered a few little tricks in camp that might make your job a little bit easier the next time you decide to head out into the backcountry for winter camping. So I want to thank you guys for stopping in, watching the whole video. I know that spring is coming and the snow will be gone soon. So the best thing that you can do is subscribe to this site so you can find it when the snow flies again. As always, I appreciate you being here. Thank you for stopping by, and I'll see you on the next one. If you're going out hunting, consider bringing extra ammo. If you're going out hunting, consider bringing extra ammo. If you're going out hunting, consider bringing extra ammo.